Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mr. Chapman, the school minister. Uh, I want to begin this talk um, by introducing the people who uh, helped make chapel, uh, who helped prepare and uh, prepare chapel with me and help make it effective. So I'm going to ask these people to stand up as I call their names. Uh, please hold your, hold your applause while they stand until the end of the group, okay? So first of all, the head chapel prefects, Evan Dooling and Molly McDowell. And the chapel advocates, Eugene Cho, Jacqueline Phillips, Emily Pratt, Tom Pyle, Will Sanders, Isabella Soto, and Cora Witherow. And then I'm going to ask my colleague and friend, Reverend Ofori, the dean of uh, DEIB, to stand. Our music team, our awesome music team, Dr. D'Angelo, Dr. Bruschi, uh, and our amazing organist, Mr. Humphreyville. Uh, and our tech team in the back, Mr. Dobbins, Mr. English, and Mr. Moffat. Now, Mr. Packard didn't want me to introduce him, but without his support and encouragement, we couldn't do these, I couldn't do this job and we couldn't have good chapels. So I won't ask him to stand, but can we have a round of applause for all these folks? There's one other person without whom we couldn't have chapel services, uh, but I'm going to hold off and introduce that person in the course of my talk. Um, so in the last, we've been through some challenging times, um, both as a community and as a nation. And I'm reminded this morning that today is 9-11. And for those of us who are a little older, uh, this is a, a very meaningful day. Um, when we remember the terrorist attack uh, 22 years ago in New York. Um, uh, so that's, that's been one big challenge. Another big challenge has been just the weather that we've been through this past week, uh, when at first it was really, really hot, uh, and then we had this terrific storm. Um, so, and, and I think that the, this weather that we've seen this week is kind of an indication of the, the, the weather, tra the, the climate difficulties we're experiencing worldwide as we deal or fail to deal with climate change. Um, you know, there, there was, a, it was a sudden and a fierce storm, trees, uh, trees blowing down, streets and houses flooding, and shutting down the power here, as you all know. Challenges are part of life, and what matters most is how we respond to them. And I know Mr. Packard and the administration of the school are hugely grateful to all of you uh, for the way you pulled together in responding to the challenge of our, our difficult weather this past week. Uh, it's not a surprise to me that you all pulled together. I've, it's something I've seen over and over again in this community. Uh, we're a very diverse uh, group of people. We come from different countries and backgrounds and cultures. And we may not always understand each other perfectly, uh, but when the going gets hard, over and over again, this community pulls together. I've seen that when tragedy strikes an individual member of this community. Uh, I've, seen it, uh, I've seen it on the playing field when the whole school comes together to support a Brooks team. I've seen it in the classroom when the whole group, the whole group of the class lights up with the pleasure of learning something new. Um, and I've seen it when this whole community comes together with one voice in school meetings, in watching a play in the theater, and many, many times here in chapel. Mr. Packer talked last week about chapel as being a place where we gather to recognize and share and celebrate our common humanity. I love being here in chapel um, with you all. When we're here together, I think this is where God meant me to be. Uh, and I always want this chapel to be a place where every single person is valued and included and cared for and loved. I also want chapel to be a place where we recognize our dependence on a power greater than any of us. The power of God, if we can call it that, the power of sacred love. Uh, I'm not here because I have this collar. I'm here because God changed my life. When I was younger and trying to find my purpose, the great spirit of love, God, suddenly showed up in my life 
and filled me with a love and a joy and a strength that I can't even imagine, that I couldn't imagine and I can't even begin to describe. And that spirit transformed me. Uh, and since then, my life has been truly joyful and truly wonderful. That spirit of love has a thousand names. God, Allah, Brahman, Buddha, Enlightenment, Wakantanka, Quetzalcoatl, Tao, the Holy Spirit. The list of names goes on and on. We're a diverse community, and among us we have many different ways of naming and celebrating the great spirit, the great I am. But as our three readings tell us this morning, ultimately what the spirit about is love. And I know that sometimes here, uh, people here feel that their way of thinking about the great spirit gets overlooked. And I know that some of us question the reality of the great spirit, the spirit of God. And all I can say is, when you've once really encountered the spirit of God in your life, you can never doubt it again. You'll know that the spirit of love is the ultimate reality, the reality that we're all, I believe, in search of. As we heard from Mr. Packard last week, this community was founded with the expectation that it would always be an Episcopal school and with the idea that chapel service services would always proceed, follow word from word, word for word from the Episcopal prayer book. Um, that no longer works for this diverse community. Uh, it no longer fits that what we do here is exclusively Episcopal or exclusively Christian. But I do believe that we have a responsibility toward the founders of the school and toward all of our ancestors in every culture who handed down to us their faith and trust in the great spirit of love, however they understood it, and who called us to live lives focused on love and on caring for one another. I believe that in our heart of hearts, in the depth of our subconscious, every single one of us knows something about the great spirit of love. And, and, and we know that we depend on that spirit for our life, for every breath we draw, for all our hopes and dreams, for all the possibility and promise of living together in a community of love and respect and caring. You know, even those who say, I don't believe, and there are some among us, I know, even those who say, I don't believe, when danger or fear strikes, they often shout out, oh God, or God help us. When the storm hit on Friday, I was driving this way on Route 495, and suddenly it seemed like nature had gone out of control. The trees were threatening to fall over. They were twisting and twisting, and I could scarcely see out of my car. And without thinking about it, I, I said, oh my God, yikes. It was a prayer. It was an instinctive prayer that came up from my heart of hearts. The, the, it came up from the part of me that knows the spirit with no question. And I suspect I wasn't the only one in the course of that storm who responded that way to its suddenness and violence. I believe that prayer is something that we all do, even those of us who say we don't believe. When our heart is lifted up by a beautiful sunset, by seeing children playing, by holding a pet we love, or by the delight of just being with friends or family who love and care for us, I believe that moment of uplifted heart is prayer. It's a prayer of gratitude. It's a prayer of gratitude for the gift of life and, and, and the joys and wonders of life. And it's a prayer that recognizes that there is a power greater than any of us, a power that we all belong to. And I also want to suggest that we at Brooks School we have a special way of praying that many of you participate in but may not, may not have thought of it as prayer. Uh, it's not always serious prayer and sometimes it's pretty jokey, but I think it's a form of prayer all the same. And to talk about that now, I want to introduce the person I left out of the introductions at the start of this talk. I can't ask him to stand because he's not with us, he's dead. <laughs> but this is, this is Endicott Peabody, the man who founded Brooks School. And as you all know, I, I hope you all know, uh, his statue is in the academic building, and his nose is shiny because people walk by him, because when people walk by him, they give the nose a rub for good luck. They give the rub a nose for their, their hopes, their dreams, their they give, a, they give the nose a, robe, a, a rub asking for the help of something greater than, what, than, than any of us. 
Um, and I do that myself. And I want to suggest to you that that is a form of prayer, even though it's not very serious and maybe it's a little goofy. Because as goofy as it is, it is a way of recognizing that things aren't all under our control, that we need help from a power that's beyond our understanding, and that there is a greater power on which our life and our happiness depends. So in all seriousness, I invite you to think about that, rubbing that nose. I, I invite you to think about that as prayer the next time you rub Mr. Peabody's nose. And now, um, this has been a little bit serious, but in the spirit of fun, I want to share with you a poem I wrote a couple of years ago about Mr. Peabody's nose. Uh, those of you who are seniors, I think, have seen this before. Uh, the rest of you, I think, to the rest of you, I think it will be new. Uh, but the poem has four stanzas. We're going to put it up on the screen, and I'm going to invite you to read it aloud with me. Thank you. God bless you all. I love you all. <laughs>